Hi. Welcome to our Quick Byte series. We are releasing Quick Byte videos to grab knowledge on specific concepts within a few minutes. This video delves into insurance policy service transactions, specifically focusing on those applicable to personal lines property and casualty, PNC, insurance within the USA. After a policy is issued for cars, homes, and personal articles etc. in personal lines, its life cycle doesn't conclude. Insurance companies diligently provide ongoing service to maintain these policies. It's important to note that the discussed services pertain to policy transactions, distinct from claims or billing-related actions. While additional transactions might exist based on the system or carrier, the ones detailed here are typically integral to a PNC insurance organization's operations. Please remember that these transactions are not specific to any insurance carrier or any commercial off-the-shelf product for insurance. However, this will help you learn about insurance transactions when you are in a policy administration project of PNC Insurance. Let us jump into the content. As we said earlier, these transactions are applicable to PNC Insurance lines. Let us look at each transaction one by one. Endorsement or policy change is a common transaction. As mentioned earlier, this transaction is also called by different names, like amendment, adjustment, or mid-term adjustment if it is in the middle of the policy. Once a policy is issued as part of new business, it is imperative that some change in the risk or personal circumstances of the insured lead to a change in the policy. Normally, an endorsement or policy change is issued to the insured once the change is accepted by the insurer. As you are aware, a PNC insurance policy in personal lines is issued for a fixed term. Usually, it is six months or one year in the USA. Even though long term policies may exist, they are uncommon. At the expiration of the term, say six months or one year, the policy is renewed for the next term. This transaction is called renewal. A policy can be cancelled either by the insured or the insurer for various reasons. An insured may cancel the policy for various reasons, like that he sold the house he insured, he got an alternative insurer with a lower premium, he needed a higher coverage policy with another insurer, and so on. This may lead to the cancellation of the existing policy. Also, the insurance company may cancel the policy and the primary reason could be non-payment of premiums. There may be other reasons too, but usually it is occasional that the insurance company cancels the policy except for non-payment of premium. It may also happen that a cancelled policy will be brought back to its original status. It may be at the request of the insured. As an example, a non-payment cancellation is reinstated to its original status by paying a premium. However, this is as per the procedures and rules of the insurance company. This transaction is called reinstatement. In rare cases, it may happen that the policy that has already been issued has been rewritten into a new one. If there is a material information change and the policy cannot be amended for that change, then the policy is rewritten. A significant change in risk profile, like a change in the issue state itself, may warrant a policy rewrite. Sometimes, a policy service ends up with just an inquiry. It may be as simple as asking for a duplicate copy of the policy, checking the renewal premium, or knowing the premium for a policy change. It may or may not be initiated as a transaction based on the insured's request. Some systems may have additional transactions like correction, reissue, or reversal, depending on the insurance carrier. What is mentioned here is what is commonly seen in the insurance organization systems. What we have discussed is only for personal lines and we have not covered here out of sequence transactions and that will be taken in our formal courses. We have also not covered transactions like audit, which is usually applicable to commercial lines. We have seen various policy service transactions in the last slide. In this slide, you will look at the channels through which policy servicing transactions are initiated. Primarily, we can classify the channels as direct through an insurance company, through an intermediary like an agent, MGA, or broker, or digital, online channels. 
the request can come through any of these channels. What we have mentioned is what we have commonly seen. Some insurance companies may not allow all policy service transactions to be done online, digitally, or through an intermediary. Some of the requests may be inquiry-only requests, meaning no policy service transaction is initiated. For example, a customer is calling an insurance company call center, and a customer service representative is attending the call. The CSR has to verify the identity of the caller and verify the policy details. Usually, the details of the policy are viewed from the specific policy admin system. If the request is just an inquiry, then the response is given back through the appropriate channel. If it is not an inquiry-only call, then the specific policy service transaction is identified and initiated. If the request is through online or digital channels, the user usually logs in and chats with a CSR for the inquiry or provides a request for the query. Nowadays, robotic BOTs are initially used to answer any inquiry from the customer and are directed to a human. If the insurer's system allows for the initiation of transactions online or through digital channels, the user himself can initiate the transaction based on the process of the specific company. What we describe here is not applicable for automated renewals or insurer-initiated transactions. The output of a new business is a policy document. The output of a policy change is an endorsement or amendment to the policy. This may be called by a different name by the organization, too. Endorsement or amendment is a commonly used name for the output of a policy change transaction. It may happen that policy changes lead to an additional form being attached. In our course Part A, we have explained additional forms with an example. Additional forms are required as part of the policy when any change is necessary in the main form. For example, Mr. X is residing in Nevada, U.S., and has insured his car and received the policy document. In the policy document, any trailer attached to a car is excluded. He bought a trailer after three months of car insurance and applied for a policy change to insure his trailer for comprehensive coverage. The insurance company will issue an endorsement with an additional trailer comprehensive slash collision coverage endorsement form to insure the trailer. So additional forms may also come into play during the policy change transaction. A policy service transaction may trigger underwriting again if there is a change in risk information. However, the underwriting rules of the specific organization determine the need to call for underwriting during policy changes. A policy service transaction may trigger a rating if the transaction needs premium calculation again. If the transaction is non-financial in nature, like a phone number change or address change, it may not need a rating. A cancellation or reinstatement of a policy may trigger additional documents. Thank you for watching the Quick Bite series. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and provide a thumbs up if you like this video. Visit our website www.insuo.com for formal courses and certification.